you're a car enthusiast and you got 40 grand burning a hole in your pocket. Is this Mustang EcoBoost manual the right way to spend it? Maybe, so let's figure out what's good, what's bad, and how you should option this car if you like performance. Is this particular build with the stealth package worth 40 grand? Let's find out. All right, let's give it some gas. So this is the 2022 Mustang EcoBoost premium version, and this is the stealth package, and this also comes with Recaro seats. So it's definitely not perfect, and we're gonna talk about a little bit later why this is actually a $40,000 car, but this 2.3 liter EcoBoost engine, the four cylinder is actually pretty big. Nowadays, the standard size is two liters, and if you're looking at the competition like the Subaru BRZ, that has a 2.4 liter engine, but it is naturally aspirated, so that limits its tuning potential compared to this engine. There's two levels of tune of the EcoBoost. This one makes 310 horsepower, 350 pound-feet of torque, which honestly isn't too bad. It's not a bad sounding engine, actually. I was surprised. I was expecting it to sound really disappointing after coming from the V8, but this actually sounds pretty good. This has the active valve exhaust in it, kind of a nice option to have. Now, this does have a manual transmission. I know the manual transmission in the Mustang has gotten a lot of flack in the past, especially in the V8, but in terms of the feel, this is really, really good. I think this is a lot better than the Nissan Z in terms of just the feel of the gearbox. This feels very positive. It's very easy to heel and tow. The pedal box is good. I can heel and tow very easily. Pedal placement is great. It feels good to me. Burnout, take one. So not the most exciting burnout in the world. You'd probably want to get the V8 for that, but I don't want to destroy the clutch. I do want to keep getting press cars and not get locked out. So if you like manual transmissions, I think you're going to like this one. It's obviously not as good as the Gatrog in the Mach 1, but it's pretty good. And if you want to save a few dollars, which I think you want to do, that's the point of this video, this is definitely the way to go. It's pretty easy to shift, especially if you're a beginner to manual transmissions. So I'll be honest with you, this engine is better than I expected. Of course, the V8 is the most desirable engine in this car, and that makes a lot more power, but... This is honestly not bad. Now, it runs out of steam a little bit at the top end. Once you get above about 56, 5700 RPM, it gets a little bit soft up there but it pulls better than I expected. And I think most people are gonna find it's really not that much slower than the V8. Now, if you're a V8 enthusiast, which I am obviously, just go ahead and get the V8, but there's nothing to be disappointed about in this engine here. It makes some pretty good noises. It's got some pretty good burbles. The sport exhaust sounds good. I think it's got character. There's all these cars right now, which are all perfectly tuned and everything is so harmonious. This has got some character to it. It pulls decently. The turbo lag is absolutely minimal. So I gotta say, I'm a little bit more impressed with this engine than I actually expected it to be. Now the steering is pretty good in here. I think Ford does pretty good steering. It's got a couple different levels that you can put it into. So you've got normal and sport. And yeah, it's a lot of fun. This is a pretty fun entry level car. Now it does have a couple of shortcomings, especially in this trim. And one of them is definitely the suspension. So this is not really a sports car. I guess I'm driving it like one right now, but it's not really a true sports car because the suspension is a little bit on the soft side. And that's just what you get with the, the base level. But there are a couple ways to fix that. We'll talk about that a little bit later in the video. Another complaint is the brakes are kind of small. This is still a relatively heavy car compared to some of the lighter cars in the market. I believe this is in the 3,500 pound range, so the brakes are not really adequate for serious canyon carving. You can definitely overheat them. But again, there is a, a cure for that, which I will talk about shortly. Another downside, I guess you could say, is that this car doesn't really have performance wheels and tires. Again, there's an upgrade you can do to take care of that. The controls are all really good. The gauges are very simple. They're very easy to read. 
even though this is on a fancy interior, it feels like it's fairly well put together. The materials are nicer in this premium edition than they are in the base EcoBoost. There isn't a lot of hard plastics in here. A little bit over there, but it's a pretty decent place to be, even if it's not the most modern. Where does the EcoBoost fit into the Mustang lineup? Well, actually this is entry level. This has a 2.3 liter four cylinder making either 310 or 330 horsepower. Next up, you've got the GT with the Coyote V8 engine making 450. And then finally, at the very top of the totem pole, you've got the GT500 with the almighty supercharged V8 making 760 horsepower. As you go up in power, you also go up in price and weight. Nowadays, if you want a new sports car at $30,000, the options are pretty limited, but the base EcoBoost does qualify starting at $29,000. This is the premium. And this premium is mechanically identical to the base car. All the things that matter are the same. You get the same 2.3 liter engine. You get the same manual six-speed transmission. You get the same brakes. You get the same Ford Copilot Assist 360. And you get the same LED marker lights up front. So why does this car cost 40 grand? Well, to start off with, the premium is $5,000 more than the based EcoBoost. For that extra five grand, you get this blade deck lid spoiler, 18 inch wheels and tires versus 17. You get nicer door trim, ambient lighting. You get six way power seats, dual climate control, rear parking sensors, nine speaker audio system with an eight inch screen instead of a 4.2 inch screen and voice recognition. So at 32 grand in a rear wheel drive sports car, you've got a little bit of competition. Of course, you've got the Mazda Miata, you've got the twins, the Subaru BRZ and the Toyota GR86. And then if you want front wheel drive, you've got the Civic Si, which is around 27 grand. And of course, let's not forget the Subaru WRX all-wheel drive turbo. So this car is 40 grand, and I think that's kind of a lot for what it is. Let me explain. You start with the premium, and that's 32 grand. Then you add the stealth package, and that's another two grand. Now this is an appearance package. It starts with 19 inch wheels and tires, which of course are black. You get a black pony in the front grille. You get this performance wing, you get black mirror caps and these very cool clear tail lamps. This also has the optional active valve performance exhaust for $1,225. You get an actual CD player for $1,000 these excellent leather Recaro seats, $1,650, destination fee of $1,200, and the total is a hair over $40,000. But if you're into performance, this is not the way to order it. You wanna maximize your $40,000, and let me tell you the right way to option this car. If you wanna to stick to a 40 grand budget, here's what I do. Drop the premium package and the stealth appearance package. Instead, replace them with two packages, the high performance package and the EcoBoost handling package. The EcoBoost handling package gives you the most important performance bits, which are the MagnaRide suspension. It's a set of adaptive dampers that absolutely transform the car. It's standard on the GT500. It also gives you Brembo six piston brakes with larger rotors and a Torsen LSD. And you get 19 inch wheels with 265 Pirelli Corsa summer tires. Now this package is only $2,000, but unfortunately you can't get it standalone. In order to get this package, you first need to order the high performance package for $6,150. This gives you an additional 20 horsepower, a larger radiator, upgraded suspension, and better brakes. Together, these two packages are close to $8,200. Yeah, they're pretty expensive, but it's a much better use of your 40K if you want to get the most bang for your buck. The adaptive Magnaride suspension, the six piston Brembos, all the special tuning, the different springs, all this stuff is actually what you get in the much more expensive cars like the GT350, Dearly Departed, the Mustang Mach 1 and the GT500. You get this stuff up there. And so for $8,000 to get it in essentially the EcoBoost, more or less a base level Mustang, I think it's pretty good. Ford gives you access to the expensive stuff at what is perhaps seen as a premium if you look at it coming from the lower end of the price point, but compared to what you pay for those upper end cars, actually kind of a bargain. And that's pretty cool to me. 
Now, I love these Recaro seats. They're absolutely epic. But in order to get them, you need to start with the premium package. And that means spending another five grand so that you can then spend $1,650 on the seats. It used to be that only Germans made layered mandatory packages to get the most desirable options. And now it seems this has spread to most manufacturers. If you want to mod your EcoBoost Mustang, the ecosystem surrounding this car is actually one of the biggest on the planet, if not the biggest. If you want to add a little bit of power, let's say 50, 60 horsepower, you can do that with just a tune and it's going to cost you around $600 and you can add as much as 100 pound-feet of torque too. Of course, the natural competitor of this car is the Camaro and it does have a lot of the same advantages of this car in terms of being able to mod it. But if you're looking at the other rear-wheel drive competitors, such as the BRZ and the GR86, you're not going to be able to get more power out of them quite as easily as this because this has got the turbo engine, and that's kind of a big advantage. There's only one more year left of the S550 Mustang, which this is. In 2024, Ford is going to release the S650, and they've promised to keep the V8. So we're going to see probably some hybridization. There's probably going to be a four-cylinder hybrid possibly an eight-cylinder hybrid. And I can tell you that over the years, Ford has done a lot to keep this vehicle feeling really fresh. It drives really well. And is it worth 40 grand is the ultimate question. So if you get the performance pack and you get the EcoBoost handling pack, yeah, I think it's still competitive. I think it's still a competitive car. It's got more power than the competition at this price point for the most part. My name is Eric. There's another video on screen right over here. Thanks for watching.